Boots and Heels. I'm Boots. And I'm Heels. We are so glad you joined us again. Well, boy, we got a lot of news for you out there. Holy you've already, moly. <laughs> you've already heard about it. I don't know if anybody hasn't heard about it, but, you know, Governor DeSantis. I Ain't, mean, wow. That's kind of a... It's kind, kind of, of a big statement. deal. And go Texas. Deal. Yeah, go, go Texas. Texas. I mean, you know, there's so much pushback on this right now with... Uh, everybody's saying it up in arms, oh, you know, human trafficking. I've heard everything under the sun. Isn't it funny that they feel that way about this particular plane load of of migrants I rather know. than the ones that, you know, went um, well, in all the dead of night to all kinds of various locations across the Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't human trafficking when Biden was sneaking um, illegals yeah. all, all over the nation in the middle of the night and taxpayers had no earthly idea it was a covert operation i'm assuming not let's take let's think about this for a second okay what else are they to do what else are they to do if if the biden administration was actually concerned about those migrants they certainly wouldn't been opening up the borders which causes the problems that we we've, we've talked about a dozen times well over and, and over here's and over a again. suggestion for these countries where the conditions are so absolutely horrendous stay and force a change yeah. among your government. Force those dictators to change. Force yeah. the situation to be better. Stay and make your country a better place. Well, and you know, no, what would they'd rather do is they'd rather bring them over here and then change our country to adapt to them. That's I don't truth. think I want that. Well, that's what's happening. Oh, I know. I mean, that's exactly what is happening. But, I mean, I feel for the people. But I mean, hey, you know who does have a voice in this nation? Karens. Apparently, the Karens of Martha Vineyard. They're all experts. Yeah, the Karens <laughs> got together and they boycotted tea time and they decided to all go shadow their husband's day at work and mm -hmm. get something done about this migrant situation because it did. The Karens spoke up and the Karens got the National Guard the National Guard to get the migrants out of Na of Martha's Vineyard. Well, because it's stated it's a it's a humanitarian crisis now. Well, of course it is. It's not the, the millions coming across the border for Texas is not you know a how humanitarian many there were? crisis. Fifty. Yeah, I know, there 50. were fifty yeah. migrants. They had a humanitarian crisis at Martha's Vineyard over, over 50. fifty. Yeah, and now listen. Okay, we feel for the migrants. Okay, we are not. We are not uh, non-humans here. We feel for them. We understand they're 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 trying to leave a country that they're you know that they're they're trying to escape from. We get all that, and we do feel for them because they are in the end of the day human beings. But they are not Americans, and Americans are suffering already to the extent of my gosh, uh, supply chain shortages. Um, you know shutdowns, which we've, we're just now recovering from, our economic at an all-time low. And, you know, we're having to now appropriate for literally millions and millions of people that we, we weren't counting on. Um, I mean, well, and here's my suggestion also on that. We have laws in place. We yeah. have laws to where anyone who wants to become an American can go through the process and become an American. I have many friends that have done this. Their families have done this. I have friends that have yeah. fled Cuba, so yeah. uh, Asian countries, um, all over um, South America, you name it. And they desire to become Americans and take part in the American dream and, and live as Americans. They went through the process, they did the paperwork, and they became Americans. And they love this country as, as much as sure. anybody yeah. born here. And they're so welcome. They're welcome here. Why should these people not be asked to do the same? Because Bidens and the Democrats have promised them a free ride. They have said, yeah. come here, come here. We'll let you vote if you vote for us. We'll let you vote. Oh, and all of these hardworking <laughs> people out here that go to work every day and have their wages stolen, we're going to let you have some of their money. How about that? Yeah. And Aren't then, you tired of it? And that's and that's part of the problem. That's why that they've worked so hard on on getting rid of the voter ID mm -hmm. is because of that reason. I mean, you can't even vet these people if there is no way to produce um, really any kind of registration on these no. folks to know who they, they are. Have no ID. They can come over and say they are anybody. And you know, not to mention in, in our past podcasts, we've talked about the colored arm bands. We've talked about you know how they're getting here through the drug cartel, how much fentanyl is coming across the oh, border. So just huge. opening up. 
up the border to poor migrants is not really as no. big. That's not the thing here, you know, that has got really us as much upset as all of the other things that happen as a result of it. The criminal element. The, the criminal element. But you know what? I have yeah. another idea also. Yeah. I think if if all these countries want America to have an open border so they can send their criminals and their undesirables over, I have a real suggestion. Let's take the undesirables from places like Chicago or little Mogadishu in Wisconsin. Let's take <laughs> them and dump them off in Mexico and see how they like it. And I bet oh, you yeah. real quick, I bet you real quick they change their minds about oh, yeah. this open border thing. Absolutely, without a doubt. And uh, yes, absolutely, within their own country, because we've got some bad apples over here. Oh, yes, we do. I <laughs> we say, some bad apples. <laughs> I say, let's take them. We should challenge them I, on that. I, I, really, exactly. We have a Red Boots and Hills challenge <laughs> yeah, we do. to take our worst inner city beings. <laughs> And take them right down to Mexico and dump them off yeah. and say, here you go. Here's yep. some money. We want you to stay here. Yeah. We <laughs> urge you to stay here and see how they like it. Hey, this plane idea, it's a pretty good idea. Let's go ahead and send them on a plane over there. <laughs> I think it should go both ways because we've got plenty over here that need to get gone. Without a doubt. Well, as you can see, um, we are absolutely in representation today yes we are because we are absolutely proud of it ultra magas ultra I mean, ultra ultra no. extra ultra I mean, maga if, if i had enough you know i mean you have less than i do room to be able to put all those words but if i, I had enough if i had enough space it would be ultra 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 i think we I need mean, beanie hats that say that say extra so we can be extra ultra maga now, what sort of perpetuated our desire to wear these shirts today of course is biden's speech you know his evil commanding way that um you Good know grief. oh my gosh straight out of hitler straight out of hitler with the red background the military standing uh oh in position and kind of, i mean we all know i I'm love offended red by it yeah i, I love, love red. red but it was it was the undertone <laughs> of of tyranny and um really a very evil undertone it had nothing to do with the color red color red's oh, great yeah, yeah we color red's color great red. we have but it was did. just everything it was the staging it was the overall <laughs> oh and we have a guest yes we do well we'll introduce, it was the, we'll introduce the guest in a okay. moment <laughs> it was the overall tone uh set for that that really had everyone everyone no one was defending that well, this was the more official take on calling us extremists and that we're, we are, you know, the enemy of the country. This was the more extreme, I mean, directive from, you know, uh, Biden himself, you know, to call us what they believe us to be, which is the enemy of the country. Hmm. Um, it's actually been being said all over the place in the Democratic Party. I mean, they're already looking at us that way. And also, obviously, we see that over censorship and, and, and you know, absolutely dictating what we can and cannot say, um, you know, the t terrible abolishment of the Constitution of the United States of America. I mean, all of it. They've been saying this all along, but mm -hmm. this was really an official, yeah, well, it's, a, official it, thing. It's a way to dehumanize an yeah. entire group of people that don't think the way that they do, um, that are actually constitutionalists that want to save our country. And they have de dehumanized us. Um, they have yeah. tried to strip us of all of our dignity. And they have tried to uh, make us criminals when we are just patriotic Americans yep. taking a stand for the Constitution exactly. our, and our great nation. And I know we've covered it several, several times with uh, the FBI and and their their lack of working for the American people. I mean, circling Mike Lindell, the pillow guy at a Hardee's, really? Right. I mean, they're not going after child sex traffickers. No. They're not doing those things. No. Um, they're not going after the next potential school shooter. They're no. probably helping them actually. But but they're going after Mike Lindell, and they're searching. They're searching Melania's underwear drawer. I mean, what is up with that? And they never could come to any kind kind of real conclusion. And I listened to him this morning, actually, before we did this, and he absolutely said that they told him, "Can you keep this quiet? Yeah, they didn't and want him to tell anyone. Do not expose this. We we just wanted to ask you some questions. So you know, they take several cars and they block him in at the <laughs> drive-through at parties to do that. I mean, at this point, I, I mean, honestly, I, I have even, such a distrust for government too. agencies yeah. and our and our uh, leadership yeah. that. I would be terrified. I wouldn't know. Are they going to try to drag me away? Are they going to take me somewhere and lock me up? What are they going to do to me? Yeah. 
We, you don't know because look at the January 6th are still right. sitting in jail. Right. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I mean they're just, they send all these, that no warrant, no, no just no cause, no anything, no, no anything. And what you should be really concerned about is the breach of justice, uh, the breach of our system of laws that we have that are supposed to ensure against this. Yeah. They're not supposed to hound you with the hopes of trying to find or create some something to uh, to say that you've committed a crime. That's not how it's supposed to be in this country. And they're yeah. doing it. Well, he didn't even commit a crime. I no. mean, they just wanted to ask him questions, and that's how you, yeah, that's how you do it. Mm. You, oh, you, you surround I'm him. I'm familiar with that. At a Hardee's. Okay. Wow. That are many are many crazy. people that that were peacefully <sighs> protesting legally uh, on January 6th that were completely and totally hounded. The FBI and CIA, the government, spent millions, hundreds of millions of dollars tracking down. Yeah. Common American, any granny wearing a Depends <laughs> and and pushing herself in a wheelchair for crying exactly. out loud, got yeah. questioned by the F, hunted yeah. down and questioned by the FBI because, oh my God, don't you dare go wave a flag yeah. and support the Constitution. Yeah, absolutely not. But then you've got people that are directly connected to the Clintons, okay, that shot themselves <laughs> in the back of the head and it's, it's called a suicide, but they won't investigate that. Yeah, I mean, they won't investigate boom, you Hillary know, Clinton yeah. smashing uh <laughs> phones with evidence and having a, a top secret server at her home yeah no. with top secret <laughs> documents but that's okay but they're gonna circle uh, the pillow guy at, but at then again they probably don't want to go through hillary's underwear drawer either well oh what a good <laughs> point <laughs> oh yeah and to further make you more comfortable with the maniacs in charge we have all of these almost ninety thousand more irs agents that are um, armed and dangerous. Well, they could be if you owe $600. Right. <laughs> now, what we could do is we could have almost 90,000 officers in, in schools, in public schools, as an outreach program, yeah. not, jo not only for safety measures for those children in school, but also to bridge the gap, to bridge the gap between poor uh, America or just communities that are misunderstood and police officers that are misunderstood. Outreach mm -hmm. is a big, big thing that we should be doing in this country and we don't do enough of it. Um, let's take, my challenge is, let's take those almost 90,000 IRS agents that are gonna be busting down your door and using lethal force to look for $600 <laughs> um, and let's put them in the schools and let's have them become friends and mentors to some of these kids that really need it. And that way you're not gonna have as many problems in, within small communities. Yeah, absolutely. It goes to show you that their interest in protecting us is, is definitely at the bottom of the barrel and not. And what they really wanna do is tax us and what they right. really wanna do is come after us. Well, yeah, money. I mean, they've shown since uh, Columbine that they have no interest in protecting your children. They have no interest in protecting you. Uh, you are only a means to an end. But if enough of us step up and enough of us fight against it, then maybe we can actually see a change. It's never too late. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe. Come on. You've done a great job with the name on this one. <laughs> he's, he's, been, he's been crying wanting wanting up here this is this is bat <laughs> he looks just like he, a bat because he looks like bat but he it's does. really for batman so i almost named him bruce wayne <laughs> but we call him bat he's the latest rescue that was dumped Aww. at my house go figure and um you know if if the perfect human with the perfect home situation could come along and and be wonderful for Hi, him. Um, oh my goodness! He he would, it would be wonderful if he could if he could have his human. Yeah. So you know, um, if not, he'll just join the fold at the Night Kingdom. But yeah. <laughs> well, okay. He can the be, farm here is he completely can be, full, okay? and he can be the Dark Knight. <laughs> You know, we're terrible foster fails, though. You know that, right? So anytime that this happens, no, we we really do wage the war against uh, completion yeah. on the fosters because we end up keeping so many of them. But if they're hard to place, and once they trust us and love us, and it's kind of hard to, to depart with well, them at that point. Well, you know, point, and, so. and a lot of these dogs that, that find us um, are... Have gone through yeah. issues, too. Well, yeah. and you have to be so careful. You know, um, black pit mixes 
I have a really, really difficult road in life. And a lot of times they're the least adoptable, the least of anything. Um, yeah. And you don't want them to get in the, the hands of, of the wrong people. You know, we do want to, you know, take a moment and just, you know, uh, speak about the passing of Queen Elizabeth. I mean, since the last time that we did this podcast, you know, she has since passed away. And we just wanted to take a moment and say, oh, my goodness, can you believe it? Over seven decades of, of, of service. Of service. And, and, you, you know, with her. Quite, quite, quite exceptional, it is, actually. It is, uh, uh, she was honorable. I'm, I'm not a big royal family buff i could really actually care less mostly but you know <laughs> she she did feel a duty to her country and she yeah. she wasn't drawn to yeah. to do this and she had a life planned out for herself and she the woman gave up her entire life to try to do right by her country so um yeah, respects, respects yeah. to Queen Elizabeth. Well, rest in peace, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, definitely. Thank you for her service to the world. Yes, thank you for her service to the world. Well, you know, there's just too much for us to go over everything in one little setting here, so we'll see you again. But, uh, you know, right now, we're just going to say thank you for joining us, and so long until next time. God bless everyone. God bless, and God bless America. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.